woman or man ever wants a picture of your genitals unless they ask for it, which even then, please don't. Just don't, just don't send them. Just keep your genitals to the bedroom. That's all. everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my October wrap up for 2022. I read a total of 14 books this month so I will be splitting this up into two separate parts so this video does not become an hour long of me just rambling. So without further ado, let us get started. I read a lot of extreme horror novellas in this month because I am very far behind on my Goodreads goal so I figured why don't we read a whole bunch of really really short books and then I got Kindle Unlimited and I've just been on this binge of horror novellas because that's where Kindle Unlimited took me. So the first book that I have is called The Call, An Extreme Horror by Matt Shaw and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This novella follows a woman named Jamie Lee who has booked a getaway with her lover at an Airbnb. When she arrives, the man is not there yet, so she makes herself comfortable, and then the house phone rings, thinking that it is the man who she is having an affair with. She picks it up, but the person on the other end is not the man she thinks it is, and she discovers that he very much does not like cheaters, and he is determined to make her pay for what she has done. So I read another one of Matt Shaw's novellas, her name was Amber, last month, and I was not the biggest fan of it, but this one I enjoyed a lot more. There is a big trigger warning in this for violence against children, especially sexual, so definitely keep that in mind before you pick it up. It is an extreme horror novel. I personally would have preferred that not to be included because it was a little bit much to me, but other than that, I do think that the twist and the suspense was really well done, so I did give it a 4 out of 5 stars, but definitely be aware of what you're getting into. The next book I picked up was another Matt Shaw work because apparently I just landed on the Matt Shaw page of Kindle Unlimited, but this one is called Pest and I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows a man who sends a risque photo to an unsuspecting woman. She ends up inviting him over to her house for a little rendezvous, but things don't go exactly to his plans and it's the story of that. This one, another very quick easy read. I did not like the main character the bitch character. Uh, he was a piece of work and just very, very, very gross. I like the message behind it that basically no woman or man ever wants a picture of your genitals unless they ask for it, which even then, please don't. Just don't, just don't send them. Just keep your genitals to the bedroom. That's all I'm saying. But I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. It was average. It wasn't like the best extreme horror novel I've read, but it also wasn't the worst. Next up, I read Brute by Ash Ericmore. This one I also gave 3 out of 5 stars. It follows a woman named Grace who is going around a very wealthy neighborhood for the Green Party. She knocks on a door and she's greeted by a little old man who ends up asking for her help and thinking nothing of it, she enters his home only to discover that this was probably the biggest mistake she could have ever done. Another very quick novella, this one is about a kidnapped girl who gets locked into a sadistic man's basement. It definitely keeps your attention throughout the whole thing. I was never bored by it. It definitely has some darker themes than the first two that I read, but I do think that the ending and the final twist was really well done. I hadn't expected it, so I enjoyed it a lot, and yeah, I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is not an extreme horror novella. It is Light Lark by Alex Astor. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows a a curse that was placed on the Six Realms 500 years ago that causes every region to be affected in a different, very devastating way. Every 100 years, the centennial occurs, lasting 100 days on the island of Lightlark. In order for the curse to finally end, one ruler must die, which will kill off the entire region's people. Eyes of the Crown, the ruler of the Wilding Realm, has decided that this year she will be the one to rid everybody of the curse and restore power. I enjoyed this for the most part. I was entertained, but at times I do think that the story dragged a little bit. I was confused at some parts, especially surrounding the centennial and the rules behind it. Each ruler had these secret and hidden abilities called flares that nobody else knew about, which I thought was really interesting, but it wasn't really explained 
explained why they had those and how nobody knew about them. I didn't understand how they all kept these things hidden from each other for so long. I think some of the rulers were more developed than others. Some were literally just cardboard cutouts of characters and you never really got to know anything about them other than that they were a ruler. I enjoyed Isla as a main character for the most part, although she did make some questionable decisions at times. I really liked both of the love interests. I think that they were both very interesting characters. I'm a big fan of broody, dark, mysterious boys, so I was here for that. But I'm also a big fan of Enemies to Lovers, so I was also here for that one. So either choice would have made me happy. I did like the plot twist at the end. I think that it was really well done and I did not see it coming at all so that was a good shock value. I am a huge sucker for books with betrayal and backstabbing which this book had plenty so I actually did really enjoy it. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I know that is a very controversial book but I had fun while reading it so there you go. The next book I have is The Other Side of the Night by Andy Hammond. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows a writer named David Asha who thinks that his biggest regret is leaving his young son Elliot. David is presumed dead after the death of his wife Beth from cancer. Elliot is taken into the care of his pseudo uncle named Ben and meanwhile we are also following an officer named Harriet who has been put on a leave of absence after being accused of killing a man. She buys a used book from a local bookstore. She finds a troubling inscription in the margins of this book and it causes her to launch an investigation against her ex-lover Ben. This was actually a very interesting complex read. The only reason I gave it such a low rating was because I found the pacing to be so slow. I became bored very quickly but I still wanted to keep reading to figure out what the mystery was. I think that the ending was really well done when we finally got there. It just took such a long time to arrive. Everything was tied together in a very cohesive way. Like, it was really cool. Just so slow. It's definitely a very thought-provoking book about what you would do and what you would sacrifice for the people that you love. I do think that a lot of people would really love this book, so don't take my lower rating as a sign not to read this because it might be for you. I just personally need more fast-paced books to enjoy myself, so 2.5, but take it with a grain of salt. The next book that I read is The Asylum by Matt Dimensek, something like that. Matt Dimersky, that's his name, but this is another one I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It is a short collection of stories that are featuring a doctor who works at an asylum. He believes that his patient's stories are hinting at something more sinister going on within the hospital and it's the story of that. I was enjoying this at the beginning and I thought it was going to be a very high rating for me but I think that it teetered off very quickly and became very convoluted and didn't really make a lot of sense. I will say that it is supposed to be like the ramblings of patients in an asylum so it does make sense why it didn't really make much sense but I do think that the ending was very rushed. I don't think that it came together very well and the ending just confused me. I'm not sure if I just didn't get it or didn't understand what the message was supposed to be but like I said I think it started off strong but then teetered off in the end. Apparently this ties into Matt's other work called Psychosis. It's kind of like a prequel to that so if I had read that book maybe I would have understood this one more because a lot of the reviews that I read trying to figure out what the ending meant was saying that the bone weaver which is a big part of this book was a big part of the other book so maybe I just messed up and read this one I shouldn't have but I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I will talk about for part one of this wrap-up is How to Survive Your Murder by Danielle Valentine. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. After witnessing the murder of her older sister Claire on Halloween night one year ago, Alice is about to give her testimony. While mentally preparing herself in the bathroom, she is struck on the head, which causes her to transport back one year to the night of the murder. Allie has 24 hours to discover who the murderer is and stop them before they take their sister again, and it's the story of that. This was a really cute and fun take on the Groundhog Day trope. I thought 
that the plot was very entertaining and the pacing was really well done. I loved the ending. I think Allie must feel so conflicted on what she's going to do next. I was a big fan of all the 90s horror film mentions and the final girl trope coming into effect. There were a lot of twists and turns. A couple of them were pretty obvious, but a couple of them I did not see coming. I thought that the mystery behind who the murderer was was really fun. I was able to call who the murderer was, but very close to the reveal, so it wasn't a disappointment in the end. But yeah, I thought this was fun. It was cute. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those are the 7 books that I'm going to be talking about in part 1 of my two-part wrap-up for October 2022. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!